No sound. Now we've got sound. Oh, that's a shocker. No sound. I'll have to say all that again, won't I? Um, for those of you, for those of you just joined, tuned in, Technical Hitches, brand new software, I tell you. Good old, good job, Mummy Barmer's here. Coming up in tonight's show, we're going to be doing uh, gin cocktails. Um, we're going to be focusing on Bullard's Gin. It's my local sort of uh, Norwich gin and um, decent sized gin distillery. So that's what we're focusing on tonight. Uh, and as I said at the top, and you didn't hear it, if you are watching this on the replay, uh, I will put the chapters in for you so you can just jump to uh, whichever part you want to get involved in. The four gins that we're going to be focusing on, we've got Bullard's uh, London Dry Gin. Uh, that's their first one. That's their oldest gin. We're going to be doing their strawberry and black pepper gin. We're going to be using uh, Old Tom. And we've got their brand new sort of coastal gin as well. So that's that's kind of what we're going to be uh, doing. Uh, I'm going to be making their signature serves, essentially, with those drinks. And we're talking a bit about the drinks. So that's what's in store for tonight. Let's have a little look who's in the old chat room see if i've even got a little remote control in now it's awesome so who's in the chat uh craig hello craig trevor uh das kevin yeah I, we fixed the sound martin hello snaggletooth and if you guys lip read i'm sorry i muted myself before i came on air so new brand new software that's what's going on tonight uh trevor <laughs> you drunken southerner <laughs> There's sound on YouTube, but you're very out of sync. Yeah, it's one of these things. I've got to play about with this software. I've, I've read up with the software. Apparently, there's some delays and stuff, and I've got to kind of get used to it. So half of it will be internet connection. Now, I have um, slowed the stream by about the max it can go, 300 milliseconds. So half of it might be the connection, but half of it might be this. So it's something to all get used to. But anyway... Um, yeah, so hello guys. I'm not sure whether this is picking up Facebook comments as well. I can see you all on YouTube. Let me just make sure that Facebook is working. Hang on. Here we go. Let's just open that up. Callum and Brian. See, it's not it's not bringing in Facebook comments. All right, we'll leave that. I'll leave that open there for Facebook. Hello, Callum, and hello, Brian, over on Facebook. Uh, I'm assuming that the rest of you, let's just make double sure. Let's get that open on there. A bit of housekeeping and then we're just going to dive in for some fun. Boom. Yeah, the comments. Right. Okay, let's, let's use this for comments. Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Right, there we go. I've got comments there. Right. Uh, hello, Kim. So you're not showing up on there either. Zoe, out of sync, Andy, Trevor, we are back there. Snaggletooth, it's like a 70s kung fu film. That's on there. Right, I am drinking, to start the night off, I am drinking uh, strawberry and black pepper gin. It's really lovely. And I've got some yuzu tonic. I really like that combo. It's a combo I've had quite a bit before in the past. So that's really tasty. Hope you guys are well. Christopher, hello Christopher popping up on there. Awesome, so uh, the first one I'm gonna sort of uh, talk a bit about tonight. Oh, actually, before we dive into it, while you're all there, I've made a little little thing for uh, two weeks time. That is what is happening in two weeks time. I am gonna make your cocktails. I will create a post uh, on my community tab on YouTube. So if any of you want me to make your cocktails, I've got a couple uh, already one from Trevor, and I forget who the other one's from. Actually, it's in my it's in my uh, Instagram DM, so I'll I'll do that as well. But I'm essentially going to do a show where I make your cocktails. That is what is happening Sunday, the 11th of September. That's two shows time. Next week, I am actually going to be doing uh, some cocktails with this little bad boy. It's a chocolate liqueur, proper proper tasty chocolate liqueur. So that is what we are going to be doing. Right, let's crack on with this gin. Uh, this was their original gin. Ballard's, as right, UK, uh, I'm just going to give you my sort of side of things for gin in the UK. I classify the gin brands into three different categories. Uh, I cla basically, for me, the big boys, which are national, international kind of gin brands, so your, your Gordons, your Beefeaters, your Bombays, your Sipsmiths, 
uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that will be the sort of big boys, the national, the international brands. There's quite a few of them there. Then I would do uh, kind of the, the sort of local regional brands, which Bullard's is my closest, I would say. I have also got Warner's as well. Warner's are famous for their rhubarb gin. Uh, both are kind of where I am, South Cambridge, I'm very sort of equal distance, but Bullard's is about my uh, sort of closest one. So they are what I would call decent regional size gins. And then underneath that, you've got very much the kind of smaller uh, gins. And you could go very, very micro as well, but I just kind of clump them all together. There is a lot of gin distilleries near me. I think I've got four probably within 20 miles of me, but I would call them, even Cambridge Distillery, um, sorry, I know Will won't be watching this, but even Cambridge Distillery, I would class as a very sort of small, they haven't really gone massive as yet. So uh, Bullard's is kind of my biggish regional gin. I say launched 2015. I have actually had the fortune a couple of years ago to go and distill some of that with them. And I can testify that actually real strawberries gets used in that. So we'll talk a bit about uh, about that in a in the in the uh, I can't even get my words out tonight. I need some more drinks. There we go. Um, it's gin in it. It's gin. That's what it is. So this bad boy, ten botanicals in there. I've got them listed down there. The main botanical that sort of sticks out uh, for this is tonka bean, and it has been. I did a review of this on my channel a couple of years ago, and it was explained to me then. But tonka bean, for some unknown reason, is illegal in uh, America. So you guys watching in the US, you'll never be able to get this in the US. I've Again, I've completely forgotten why tonka bean is illegal in the US, but there we go. Other botanicals involved in this, obviously juniper, coriander, angelica, licorice, cassia, orange, black peppercorn, green cardamom, and uh, what's the other one? Lemon peel. Just have, this is 42% huh? These are kind of, these are not cheap gins. They would still give you a rough idea. They'll be about 30 pounds. It's got a very healthy uh, juniper bite to it. Quite a bit of citrus on there as well. Very, very smooth gin. Now, the two cocktails I'm going to be making with this, actually, let's just dive. Let's just dive into the comments. Just make sure there. Uh, Tish. Hello, Tish. Amy. Christopher. Is these comments caught up? These comments have caught up. Awesome. There we go. Auto Social UK. Hello, Tish. Right. Boom, 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 and who's on Facebook? Paul and Michael. Awesome, right, let's crack on. Now, the, um, oh, this, I've got a little screen here for you. Where I did this this afternoon. There we go. Look at that. Now, um, Bullards have very kindly sent me uh, their four uh, sort of uh, little cards that they do with the gins, with their four signature serves on there. Now, they've got their perfect serve, which is obviously London Dry in a light tonic water. They've got their dry martini, which is, um, Pretty standard, it's a gin cocktail. But the two I'm going to kind of do for you, I think, I'm going to start off with the duller drinks tonight. I was toying whether or not to do the red snapper for you, like gin and tomato juice. But then a couple of things kind of came. I wasn't going to do it. And then I got talking to a friend of mine that kind of works with these guys, Mango, uh, Durham Distillery. And they were doing, they did a post yesterday about Big Tom tomato juice. So I was like, let's just do it. So gin and tomato juice is essentially a red snapper. It kind of, there's, I forget what the tequila version as well is as well, but the, there is sort of cocktails named after that. It's not just vodka. And for me, actually, the whole gin and tomato juice is, because you get that fiery, when you do a Bloody Mary in the UK, in the UK you would tend to use a, a feisty sort of vodka, like absolute pepper or something like that. But the gin kind of works in the same way because you get that sort of peppery bite coming through. It actually does quite work quite well. Now, my, the thing I like to preach about with Bloody Marys, I don't make them too often. But for me, there is absolutely no point messing about with different tomato juices and then doing your mixes and, and just doing your own recipes. I don't really believe in that, especially if you're pubs and bars. What I actually believe in is this bad boy, Big Tom. I've been a, I'm not a huge Bloody Mary fan. But when I do, it's just literally all about Big Tom. So easy to get in the UK. It's got all the spices in there already. And it's just it's just easy. It's one of those grab and go drinks. So we're just going 50 mil, double bubble. And we're just going to pour that in. It's as simple as Bloody Mary as you'll ever get. Never ever shake tomato juice either. Because that will look horrible.
So red snapper, just top it up with some ice. Garnish again. You could, I mean, you could add more Tabasco. You could add Worcestershire sauce, but I honestly don't think it needs it. I really don't. I think the, I think the uh, Big Tom just works with absolute treat. And garnish it with good old celery stick. And there we go. That's the red snapper. Easy peasy. I guarantee a lot of you would never ever thought of doing tomato juice with gin, but I promise you it does work. If I hold that close up to the camera, I don't know whether you'll get it. Can you see all the bits in there? The bits of pepper. There's quite a lot of bit of pepper and it's just a really lovely drink. And I think, I think the gin, if you've got a kind of a, a feisty London dry gin with the heavy juniper notes to it, I think it actually does work really well. I think it works better than vodka. So that's the first one. The second one I'm going to do for you is their... Um, kind of Negroni. Negroni is a pretty standard classic gin drink. It's not um, it's not sweet at all, but it is kind of a go-to gin drink. Gin doesn't have too many cocktails. They're all loosely based, uh, the whole sort of gin, lemon and sugar, but we do go from time to time, we do go sort of classic. So uh, I'm just going to make it, the other reason I love Bullards as well, they kind of believe in, can we get, so the logo's there? I might have to Hang on, let's put my hand right behind it. There we go, look. It's their gin balloons. They don't believe in the big balloons. They're just like these little rocks glasses. Negroni's really, really easy to make. Just equal measures. Uh, so I'm going 25 mil gin. We're going 25 mil Campari. And then we are going 25 mil of a decent-ish vermouth. Granted, this cocktail is not for everyone, but it is, it is quite nice. Boulevardier, if you swap the gin out for bourbon, you've got Boulevardiers as well, which is really, really nice. So that's essentially the cocktail. Uh, they do recommend adding uh, orange to this as well. Angostura bitters, sorry. Uh, I don't actually do Angostura bitters. What I do do is orange bitters. You could either use Angostura orange bitters, that way around, there we go. I'm actually going to use Miss Betty's Bitters, and it's their orange tree bitters, and I'm just going for about a third of a pipette. And then we're just going to stir that down. Stir it down. How clean is that? Is it a bit of tomato juice? That'll be right. You could do this in a cocktail shaker or a mixing glass. You don't shake it, you just you just stir it. You're just stirring it down, you're basically just diluting. You need that little bit of dilution just to make the sort of cocktail ping a bit. These glasses, these glasses are perfect for Negronis. And then to garnish, where is it? You could go fresh orange zest, but if you watch my videos quite a lot, you'll know I've always got dehydrated oranges on the go. And I think that works, and that, I've just had a little spoonful of that. I think that is an absolutely banging. Um, Negroni. Negroni is a kind of, if you don't know what Campari is, it's an aperitif, very bitter, but it's kind of, this is definitely a cocktail for those of you that haven't got sweet tooths. It's been around donkey's years, it's a really old cocktail, but it's actually really, really tasty. Mm. So, right then, comments. Uh, who loves a Negroni? Hey, let me know. Give me some. Uh, give me some shout out. Right, uh, let's dive back into these comments down here. What have we got? Those comments are not really working there. Right, I'll go on Facebook. Nothing there. If I've got anyone watching, I've got twenty six of you watching. Come on, guys, let's get. Oh, here we go. Let got to scroll back. Right, uh, Aram, Sunday, September the thirteenth. Oh, if I put the wrong date, I swear it was 11th. Hang on a second. If I'd done... <laughs> Sunday the 13th. I don't know where I got the 11th from. Perhaps I was looking at 2021's camera, uh, calendar. Yes, so <laughs> September the 13th, I will be doing your cocktails. Uh, audio delay. Yeah, I know about the audio delay. It's, it's a software 
kind of thing I've got to get used to. I've got to work out how many seconds to delay it. So it would be a kind of... I did have a little look on Thursday's trial and I thought I'd nailed it, but we... don't know. Christopher, love the gin reviews. They help me. Yeah, if you do love your gin reviews, I would... I'm going to give a shout out to another um, channel. Go and, go and check out Bobby, No Nonsense Gin. Uh, he, I just left him to do the gin reviews because he's much more entertaining than what I am in the gin. And I kind of wanted to get into rum and cocktails. So go and check out Bobby at No Nonsense Gin Reviews if you like that. Uh, oh, hang on. What can we do here? Can we do that? Show. Oh, okay. I've got comment right. I see what's happening here. It's, uh, it's hiding a lot of your comments for some reason. Right, uh, Negroni is so tasty. Matco, thanks. I don't have Instagram. What was the Instagram comment for? What did I say about Instagram? Negroni, top five drink for me. Trevor, do you do uh, Boulevardiers as well? I can imagine being out there. You've kind of, you're a big sort of whiskey man as well. So let me know about that. Hey, Razor Light Mike. Hello, George. How are you? George, thank you for the... the <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for the the uh, cas. How did we say it? Cas, cascable. I've forgotten. See, another a Spanish person told me it was th cath, cathcable, and now a Mexican. You're telling me it's cas, c a s, cas, cascable, cas, cascable. <laughs> George, put it phonetically in the comments, so we'll go from there. Uh, there's no one really chatting on Facebook. So, oh, Brian's there. Hello. We love the red snapper. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, cocktail. Uh, the second one I'm going to dive into is actually, it's my favourite of the range. And there's something cool I want to tell you about Bullard's in a bit. And it sort of, it all revolves around that as well. So, uh, I've got a little trick for the fourth and final gin coming up. Uh, so, the second gin I'm going to be talking about is uh, Bullard's Strawberry and Black Pepper Gin. This isn't, I was gonna do a taste test with Whitney Neal's brand new Strawberry and Black Pepper Gin. Uh, I'll be honest, it didn't come. I ordered it from the drop store, it didn't come, uh, which is a bit annoying. Um, but the thing I will say, I know Whitney Neal gins of old. I do really love Whitney Neal gins. I think they are great for pubs and bars. They just make fun drinks very, very easy, but they are probably not for the gin connoisseur. Whereas something like this is all about the gin, essentially. It's not detracting from the gin. There are only five, if I remember rightly. One, two, three, four, five, six botanicals in this, okay? Of which strawberry is one. But there's something that I kind of want to tell you about in here. So the other botanicals, we've got juniper, uh, black peppercorn, green cardamom, and lemon peel. Now, the strawberry. This was explained to me in great length on the day that I spent with them. This is probably a couple of years ago now. They actually used banana in there as well. They did lots of tests, lots of trials uh, over a course of quite a few months to try and get the strawberry flavour to absolutely pop. And nothing was working. And then one day, I think they found, I, I forget how they found it. Something once tells me that they found it on the internet. But I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure whether one of them actually uh, decided to throw it in there. They actually threw some bananas in the uh, in the distilling tank as well and what they found was that banana helps stabilize the strawberry it, it kind of keeps that fresh strawberry taste uh, without making it too sweet all right now scientists amongst you will probably explain that a damn sight better than what i will ever do but it's just something about banana in with the strawberry and i guess it would kind of make sense with the the smoothies that you kind of get in supermarkets strawberry and banana but they just use banana just to kind of stabilise it. And what you get from this, I've got my proper tasting glass here. I don't know why I used the shot glass last time. What you get from this is you get really punchy strawberries on the nose. But as I say, the, the juniper and the black peppercorn in there, and it's, what was that other one? Greek cardamom, that's the one. Really kind of dials the sweetness back, back down. So when you do actually mix it with a tonic water, the real vibrant sort of strawberry notes come out and it's really delicious. Again, 40% ABV. So again, it's not a liqueur. It's um, even just kind of neat. You, can't, you, you do get that juniper and you do get kind of really lovely sort of strawberries. It almost reminds you 
of that kind of eating a fresh, eating sort of a fresh strawberry. I really like that. Right, the cocktails I'm going to do for this, there's a couple of obvious ones there. They're perfect service, again, a light tonic water. Strawberry Fizz is pretty obvious. They're going to do um, champagne or Prosecco with that. But the two I'm going to do for you here is the Rambling Strawberry and the Strawberry Clover Club. Uh, and I've done the proper Clover Club on my YouTube channel. Uh, this one is absolutely tasty. So let's get that off the screen so you can see a bit more. Let's have a little, little, little chunk of that. Right, let's get rid of those two. We don't need those. So, for the Rambling Strawberry, this is a shaking cocktail. It's kind of, it's a, it's a tall drink as well, so I will serve it up in that. I've got some new glasses from Drink Stuff. Actually, can we go in that? Let's go in that. That's going to be a bit crazy. Let's go in that. Um, really, really simple. This one, really, really simple. It's fifty, yeah, fifty ml of gin. It's kind of essentially a Collins. It's all it is. Um, and that's what I mean. All gin cocktails are derivatives of essentially the Collins or a, a proper martini or something like that. There's nothing too technical about them. Uh, we're going fresh lemon juice, 25 ml. And we are going uh, fresh, uh, fresh. We're going sugar syrup. Again, uh, I'm actually going to go 15 ml. I don't think it needs a full shot in there. Now we're just going to shake this down with some ice cubes. Give it a proper hard fast shake and there's one more ingredient to come there we go by the way this is a fun gin the mango the old tom or oh, kind of gave it away there the old tom is a fun gin as well as mango so stay i've got a couple of really quite crazy uh, cocktails for the mango one coming up right uh, i'm going to go fresh ice in here this debut this glass is losing its virginity i've got some chopped up strawberries is that on camera yeah that's, that's on camera perfectly there isn't it chopped up strawberries and then just to finish this off it's lemonade uh, and that's why i didn't use a full shot of um sugar if i'd done soda water i would have done a full shot of sugar but because i'm going lemonade uh, i'm just i just used a bit so i'm just going about 75 ml of lemonade I'm just going to pop it straight in the shaker. Safe stirring it again once it's in the old uh, in the glass. And this is their rambling strawberry. Oh, look at that! Perfect, perfect. Couldn't have done that any better. And uh, just pop those down. All float to the top. Maybe garnish that with another strawberry. I've got some whoppers here. Let's use that one. And that is the rambling strawberry. Again, really, really easy. It's essentially, essentially a Collins um, with lemonade instead of soda water. I really, I really like that. That is really good. That really, really comes to life with a tiny bit of sugar. And that's what I mean. I, I'm not convinced by the, the light tonic waters as the signature serves. I think these gins just need that little bit of sweetness from proper tonic waters, uh, from, from me personally. Oh, but that's, that is, that is divine. That is so good. So that's the rambling story, uh, rambling strawberry. I'm going to make you the Clover Club as well. So I'm just going to chill that down. We'll get that chilling to one side. Let's get rid of that ice. Perfect. Now the Clover Club, is um well this is their version we're going 50 ml of strawberry gin there we go I've not actually tried this yet so this could be quite interesting um now they've said strawberry syrup so i'm going to go puree actually i don't actually own strawberry syrup so i'm going i'm going for my um strawberry puree because it kind of is a syrup uh, and I'm just going to, they've put 25 ml strawberry syrup. I'm just going to bring that down slightly to 15. I think that'll be perfect. And then, so that's the sugar part of it. And then it's 25 ml of lemon juice in there. Now, 
if you know what clover clubs are, clover clubs are all about the froth and all about the egg whites. So the loyal viewers amongst you know that I don't use egg whites. I use Ms. Better's Bitters. There we go, Miraculous Foamers, that's what I use. So I'm just gonna use standard quarter, third of a pipette. Now to do this properly, I will do it for you. Just pretend there's eggs in there. I'm just gonna give it a dry shake. So we're just gonna uh, sort of emulsify that as you would do with an egg white, bind all the ingredients together, create the froth. There we go. Now I'm gonna shake it down properly. That's all nice and frothy. Ice that up. There we go. Right. And then double, double strain. This is your strawberry clover club. Lovely jubbly. Right, garnish, I've got I've got a whopper of a strawberry. That'll do for now. <laughs> it's a whopper. Right. Quite tart, because of the lemon juice. The strawberry kicks in. Tell you what, hot summer's day. Both of those, stunning drinks. Very different. That's kind of a bit, what's the word? I'm struggling for the word, but tart, if you like, but lovely sort of strawberry notes. The sort of the pepper comes through on the strawberry there. This is delicious though. Mm. That's my favorite. That I could drink all day long. Oh, what's going on there? Something pinged up, hello Luke. Whatever that was. <laughs> I've got to get used to all these alerts. I'm not seeing these on screen. Right. Right then. Let's dive into the banter before I dive into... Get on screen. There we go. Before I dive into the old Tom because the old Tom is delicious. Right then. Where did we get... Where did we get to with the comments? Right, I've got to scroll back up here. Do, 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 do. Right, where can we submit? Oh, was that the Instagram thing? Where can we submit cocktails? Um, you can DM me on Instagram or I will stick a post up in a community tab on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so we'll do that. I'll do that from tomorrow. Uh, where's that? That's there. Add... I can't even say that. Adsy boy 458 loving the dead man's fingers collection. <laughs> yes. I've got I've got them all. You won't see the other one. The um uh the hemp one is on the top. There's another shelf. What you can't see here is another it's another shelf of all the rums up up here. We can't get them on screen. So I've got all the rums up there. Uh Razor Light Mike, any cocktail, any good cocktails for lemon gin? Uh, lemon gin, uh, Elderflower Collins. So um, essentially, you know, as I say, gin, gin cocktails all derive virtually from either martinis or um, the Collins, essentially. So you just flip things out and the Collins is essentially just gin, lemon, uh, sugar and soda water. So for me, a lemon gin, uh, whether that's Gordon's, whether that's Sip Smith, lemon drizzle, what other lemon gins are there? Uh, there's one I'm forgetting. Can't think of the other one. Um, literally, I would I would possibly do a sort of a lemon and elderflower Collins. So lemon gin, uh, swap the elderflower um, cordial syrup, whatever you use for the sugar lemon juice and then top that up with soda water. I think that'll be cracking lemon and elderflower Collins. Perfect. Uh, Dars love sweet drinks. Right, uh, let's get some interaction going. As we're talking about gins, uh, in the comments, I want you to name your favorite gins. What's your go-to gin? And tonic brand, actually. Um, so your favorite gin and your favorite tonic brand. Go, that's what I want to know in the comments. That's what we'll get to. 
uh, Martin Tarquins. Tarquins, yes. Tarquins was actually kind of my. When I'm home, back down in Cornwall, it's kind of my local brand down there. They've got a lot of love for Tarquins. Really good gins. Uh, here to come the comments now. Uh, Beef Eater and Fever Trees. I'm trying to work out what comments are best here. Which feed is this? It's all this technology. It's, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right, I do elderflower with tangerine gin. Crazy, we like that serve. Um, sounds good, lemon lime loveliness for Gemma, for the missus, does that say Gemma? I think it does. Yeah, the missus. Uh, Monkey 47, Indian tonic water, yeah, cracking gin, Bombay and fever tree. Ooh, Carl, Carl Lossi? What's, what, what's Wildcat Bramble? What's that? Is that a brand? I don't know. don't know. Heard of that. Tish. I really like the Bloom Gin with simple... Tish, is that the blue, the sort of turquoise blue gin? Um, the, the sort of classic one? Or they've got... Oh, I haven't tried it yet. I want to try the... Is it passion fruit and lemon or something like that? The, the yellow one? I haven't tried the Bloom ones yet. Uh, Zoe... Jesus, I can't even say that word. Uh, Margin with Fanta Lemon. Yes, but tonic-wise, love Franklin's, obviously. Christopher, actually, I like Le Tribute Gin. It's from Spain, and they have their own tonic. Ah, okay, crazy. Fentiman's London, or London Essence are my tonic brands. Martin, you surprised me there. London Essence, okay. Um, right, okay, here's a, here's a yes, no one. Or happy face, crying face, fever tree tonic. Uh, happy face or crying face? Uh, let me know what you think about fever tree tonic. While I just quickly wash these down for cocktail number three. Dear, dear. All right. Do that. Do that. I know. I need to start getting guests. I need a bigger studio so I can have guests in, so people can have these drinks. <laughs> Might say, might actually save that for breakfast tomorrow. Bank holiday Monday. Mm. Oh, no, it's that one. So, oh, there's lots coming in here now. Lots coming in here. Lots of lots of smiley faces for for the fever tree. A few crying faces coming in now. Okay, interesting. Is there anything happening? There is. It's not coming through on Facebook. All right, I'm just going to dive into Facebook now. Um, Brian, I've got, um, I'm talking, <laughs> talking into that camera then. Brian, uh, on Facebook, I have got a kind of a flip on the bramble coming up uh, in the last gin. Doing that. Uh, Tankery 10, Finch and Leeds Pink. Okay, I know what those are. Michelle, favourite gin is Nordes. Oh yeah, that's, see, I've forgotten about that. That's a cracking gin as well. I think that's all the Facebook comments. On there. Cool. Right. Go back to the old tube of you. Uh, Kunal. Is that how you say your name? Kunal? Kunal Verma? Uh, the alternative for bitters. Essentially, essentially, there are no alternatives to bitters. There's just a lot of different brands out there. Um, so it's all about finding your brand. I mean, obviously... These two bad boys have been, well, that bad boy has been the king of bitters for God knows how long. And it is phenomenal. Angostura, they do their orange one as well. You've obviously got what I would say more entry-level bitters, kind of fee brothers, plum, cherry, lemon, grapefruit. Um, I obviously use Miss Betters Bitters. Bitters, I say it for the for people that don't really know, bitters for us bartenders kind of like chef salt and pepper. All right, they are kind of the ingredients we use to bring out and accentuate flavours more in cocktails. So is there an alternative? The only only real alternative you could do is kind of like a saline solution, salt, uh, salt water. I do actually love adding a tiny bit of salt to pina coladas. I think that works exceptionally well. Just a tiny, tiny little bit of saline solution, just equal amounts of, like you would do sugar syrup, equal amounts of salt, rock salt, 
just with a tiny bit of water. Uh, and again, just a kind little little touch, not much, about two or three mil to a pina colada just works a treat. But direct replacement for bitters, not really. It's just about finding the brands or the flavors that you love. And there is so many different brands, so many different flavors out there. It's just whatever works for you. So I hope that's answered that. Uh, Kunal, is that, off? I'm sorry if I am butchered your name. Uh, Martin Christopher. Yes, Christopher. Actually, who was I talking? I was talking to someone in, I don't think, was it Trevor? I'm not sure it was you, Trevor. Uh, talking to someone in Canada the other day about Fever Tree. Um, Fever Tree abroad still has the full fat sugar. In the UK, we've got the refreshingly light stuff and it's just, they've, it's basically stripped back the flavour. So the elderflower in the Mediterranean, I detest, I absolutely detest uh, Fever Tree's flavours of that because there's just no flavour to them. If you get the full fat stuff, they are banging. There is absolutely no better tonics out there. But the refreshingly light stuff, pff, go to go to Franklin's and Sons. They'll just knock them hands down. Uh, oh, I pronounced your name perfectly. Yeah, perfect. Trevor, perhaps it was you I was talking to. Right, uh, let's go on to, uh, where's, it's number three now, this one. And this is the old Tom Gin. Now, for a lot of you, well, I'm being presumptuous here. Um, for some of you, I should say, you might not understand what an old Tom Gin is. And to kind of put it into basic English for you, there essentially is, or was, throughout the age of time, four styles of gin. And I mean kind of like 1900s, four styles of gin. There's... Uh, Dutch Geneva or Geneva, whichever way you want to call it, is Geneva, but the English like to flip things up and call it Geneva. Uh, so it's Dutch Geneva, and that was the very first gin. Uh, the English, we invented London Dry Gin, and I'm not going into going to bore you with all the classifications and the legal requirements and all this, that, and the other, but it's London Dry Gin. Old Tom is kind of seen as the bridge between Geneva and and London Dry Gin. So it's a little bit sweeter. It dials back the juniper somewhat, so you get a lovely, for me, it's actually one of my favorite styles of gin, especially this one, uh, when I tell you what it's distilled with, uh, because it's absolutely delicious. It kind of, for those of you that don't like your Sipsmiths, your tankeries, um, your big, punchy, even beef eaters to a certain extent, your big, punchy, juniper-based gins, um, but don't want something as sweet as a gin liqueur, get out, um, then Old Tom's are cracking. This is, It's not that popular in the UK. I can only think of three, maybe four brands in the UK, like big brands that you probably get. Old Tom is one. Uh, Poetic License is another. Is another. Heyman's is probably the big famous one in the UK. Um, but yeah, so as I say, it's the bridge. Now, what this has kind of got in it, how many botanicals have we got in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve botanicals in here. So I'll go through them. Juniper, coriander, I'll leave that one for a second. Uh, licorice, angelica, cassia, black peppercorn, pink peppercorn, vanilla pods, lemon peel, and grapefruit peel. Now, the two that excite me here is honey and mango. So the honey and the mango are in there to kind of bring that sort of flavour forward and a little bit of sweetness. And what's happened with this is it's actually infused with uh, a little bit of sugar afterwards just to bring that sweetness up. Now it is 42.5% uh, gin, so it's still quite strong. Oh, we need to, let's pop that in there. But this one, whereas I did this for Young Joe, if he's watching, I'm not sure, I haven't seen his name pop up yet. Uh, this is Durham's Mango Gin. Don't think of this as a mango gin in the slightest, all right? Think of this as a proper sort of London um, Old Tom Gin. You do kind of get the notes in there. You definitely get the honey. But on drinking... You do, that's the thing, you do get the juniper and you do get the peppercorn, but it's super, super smooth with that little bit of fun uh, sweetness coming through at the end. Old Tom's for me are definitely my favourite style of gin without a question. You know, they're just so easy to drink. And this, I have got a soft spot for Poetic Licence, but I, I think this is possibly... Heyman's is kind of like a standard 
uh, London dry gin. No nice sort of frills. Nothing. It's it's a great uh, great old Tom gin. Sorry, but there's no frills to it. Whereas this is something exciting to, about it, and I kind of I do really like this. So the cocktails. Let's dive into. This is what they come on pop up. Oh, there we go. Right, what they uh, have sent through. Now, here's the two cocktails that I'm really excited to show you tonight. Um, I'm going to do for you the Espresso Martini. And I know I get a lot of banter on my channel about me pronouncing it Espresso. And that's how I, that's how I pronounce it. Es, espresso. It sounds a bit wrong. Es, espresso. I can't say it properly. So, I say Espresso. Sorry, espresso martinis. Uh, so I'm going to do an espresso martini with that, but I'm going to do the old Tom Martinis as well. The Martinez is a fantastic cocktail. Uh, so they're the two cocktails I'm going to do for you with this. Absolutely delicious. And a lot of people probably wouldn't think about gin uh, with an espresso martini. On the day I was up with them distilling that, we went back to their pub that they have the bell i forget what it is 10 bells really really sorry I forgot what it is. eight bells 10 bells i forget i forget what the pub's called uh, and they were playing about and made uh, made an espresso martini for me afterwards with this and i tell you why it was absolutely divine slightly different ratios needed uh right what glass let's go for this let's go for this one another new sexy glass from drink stuff uh, so that's what i'm going to use I'll dive, I'll dive into, I can see the comments flying through again. I'll dive into this. Is anyone actually, here we go. Has anyone actually tried an old Tom gin before? And if so, which one? What's your favourite? Uh, just while I'm making that. So, dry that up. Right, there we go. So, uh, old Tom gin. I want 50 mil of this. And normally I would do, especially with vodka, I would do equal measures. Um, something that size, probably 35 mil, 35 mil, 35 mil. But this, because of the kind of the little fruity notes in it, you kind of need to adjust it a little bit. So 50 mil of um, Old Tom. We're going 25 mil of Kahlua. Not with strawberry though. Let's get a fresh one. 25 mil of, strawberry, of um, Kahlua. And then, uh, how much, uh, I've forgotten how much coffee they said, 30 mil is it? Yeah, 30 mil. 30 mil of fresh espresso. Perfect. Right, pop that down. Right, icing up. And then a good hard, fast shake again. Fresh espresso, and you'll get that lovely crema on top. Lovely, jubbly. Right, get rid of your ice. I love this. I used this last night in a Zoom class. Perfect for espresso martinis. Kind of like an old school Victorian martini glass. Right. Lovely, jubbly, settling like a pint of Guinness. Right, and then the garnish for this. I can't do this in real time because I know this is delayed. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be standing here for five minutes waiting. The garnish for this is at three espresso beans. And the reason why it's three is because they signify, uh, it comes from the Latin con la massa. I've probably but butchered that as well. So any Italians watching, feel free to phonetically correct me. But essentially, each coffee bean represents something. So the first one is health. The second one is wealth. And then the third one is happiness. So health, wealth, and happiness. That is why we put three coffee beans on our espresso martinis. And there we go. That's an old Tom espresso. You see that? It's proper lovely. And that is just, that is so good. I have to say, I do love an espresso martini with a kind of like vanilla vodka. But I just think, you, you kind of get the little bits of mango, uh, sort of subtle fruitiness, but you also get that kind of little bit of sweetness coming through there with the honey. I just, I think that's a really good espresso. 
is something that people just wouldn't associate, like a gin in an espresso martini, but that is so good. Gives it that fruity little lift. I, I could quite easily, I'll tell you what, it's close between that and that, which is my favorite cocktail so far of the night. I potentially would go espresso. Ooh. But I'm gonna do the Martinez for you in a second. The Martinez is really lovely. Right, where do we get to with the comments? Here's the 10 bells. <laughs> Cheers though. Right, uh, bathtub gin, yes, Trevor. Uh, never tried old Tom. Christopher, I'm not sure what you get in Germany. Um, and I'm not sure whether there, there's there's a lovely young lady on this on this thread that might be able to uh, to help you out a little bit. But I'm not sure whether you'll be able to get this in Germany. Um, I would hazard a guess that Heyman's would be exported to you guys. Um, I'm not sure about the others, but old Tom, I'm not sure. The Scandinavians are very crazy with their gins, so the Scandinavians might have some sort of old Tom. I've got Berexton up there. Um, they might have some sort of old Tom, but I'd definitely recommend trying, especially something with something that sort of pushes the boundaries, uses a bit of um, fruit and a bit of something, uh, I don't know how to describe it, essentially a bit of fruit to bring the sweetness to it in, instead of just adding plenty of sugar, if you know what I mean. So a lot of old Toms will just add sugar to a London dry gin just to make it an old Tom. Uh, whereas this kind of takes a different route, if you know what I mean. So definitely, I don't know if you can get it, definitely go for it. Uh, oh, here we go. Tish, what's Tish? So Tish is Auto Social UK. Go and check, if you love your cars, go and check her channel out. She's really cool. Uh, I ran Costa Coffee for three years and called it e Espresso. Espresso. E Espresso. I tell you, it's my sinuses there. For some reason, when I'm in the flow, I can't say Espresso unless I stop and then say the word. So if I'm in full flow, I go Espresso. If I'm in full flow and just say espresso, it comes out express. It's really weird. Um, right. Raise the light, Mike. We have a good friend called Tom. It was his birthday this week, so I think an old Tom is on the cards for him. Colossi. Not a fan of Kahlua, but I do like the salted caramel for it version. Uh, Colossi, do you... Is it Kahlua... Um, is it the coffee taste that you don't like or is it the sweetness? And I'll look out for your comment because I've got a couple of other brands down here. If it's the sweetness uh, that you, might help you. If it's the coffee taste, then don't have Kahlua. Simple as. Uh, Trevor. Oh, Trevor's beating me too. I should read these comments first. Shouldn't I? <laughs> Trevor! <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Black, right? <laughs> What, what I was going to say, uh, Carlossi, right, if it's Kahlua is too sweet for you, then I don't know where you are, but if you are in the UK, we have got a whole bunch of coffee liqueurs. We've got Kahlua. Uh, we've got, uh, where's my Tia Maria gone? I was using Tia Maria last night. We have got Tia Maria. Uh, they're the standard ones. We've got uh, Mr. Black. We've got Conker. And then we've got Apple Falls. Now, the reason why these two are very different to those and Kahlua is there's no added sugar to them. They're essentially a cold brew coffee and that's it. So if you're one of these people that doesn't like sweet stuff, Mr. Black, that'll be damn sight easier to get hold of than Conquer. Um, Conquer is lovely. There's also another one, I can't reach it. Um, it's two, actually. I, can't, I haven't got the rums. Uh, there's Kalka, which is um, distilled down in Cornwall. And there's, oh, Gorilla Guys. What's the Gorilla one called? Oh, it's gone now. Completely gone off the top of my head. Completely gone. But essentially, other sort of coffee liqueurs out there. But these two haven't got the sugar in them, so they're not quite as sweet. Whereas that one, if you love something a bit fun, that one's got a bit of chocolate in there as well. So it's coffee and chocolate. See, it's a whole different ways you go. Anyway, back on, back on, back on track. Right, what else are we chatting about here? Uh, da, da, da. Kai, Kai, who, what? 
Kainotu, Kyoto Old Tom Gin from Japan. Oh yeah, I forgot they did. I, I have never tried that, I'll be honest, but I forgot they completely did do that. Uh, Trevor, cheers from Holland. Hello, Ruben. Whereabouts in Holland are you from, Ruben? Zoe, oh, here she is. Look, currently working on a way of shipping to the EU. Master of Mole are working on it too. Yes, we need this one. If you're going to champion one gin out tonight, I, 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 as much as I do love the strawberry and black pepper, it's definitely the old Tom because I really do think that that makes um, gin accessible. For those people that kind of don't really love that sort of dry juniper bite, Old Tom is the way forward. Right, Martinez time. Martinez, we do love... I'm going to drink a bit of this. Mm. Right, Martinez. Um, slightly been flipped up. This is their signature serve. Slightly been flipped up to a proper Martinez. So we'll see what this tastes like. 50 ml of gin. This is a stirred cocktail. No shaking involved in this. We've gone for dry, yep. Uh, 20 ml of dry vermouth, so we're going martini extra dry. And I, I think the final flip in here, there we go, oh, 20, wasn't it? another five. So 50 ml of gin, 30 ml of, um, 30? 20 ml of dry vermouth, sorry. And then, here's the killer ingredient, apricot brandy and we're going for 10 mil of apricot brandy just 10 now they've also said uh discard they put a twist of orange to to garnish now what you do with the twist of orange you kind of espresso uh, express it oh, i'm saying espresso again you express it express it over the cocktail when it's finished as I use dehydrated, I'm just going for a couple of little drops of orange bitters. About that, one, two, there we go. A couple of little drops. So, a few ice cubes, excuse the fingers. Uh, need a Nick and Nora for this one as well. Where's my Nick and Nora? There it is. It's a Nick and Nora glass chilled down right give that a good stir down sort of a classic real martinez real classic sort of dr gin drink but i'm looking forward to this because the mango notes with the apricot notes especially for me as well as a rum lover this should be absolutely bang on right who else is in there yes trevor that's the one that's the one, thank you. Z what? Oh, is it a silent Z? Or Ruben? What? Z Z Zola? Or Zwala? Or. No, I, I know places by football teams, so. <laughs> Tell me what your football team is, and, and I might know. Unless it's Zwala United, and I've never heard. Right. <laughs> right, and then we're just going to strain this. Perfect, my bomb sight. And then, as I say, they, you normally that's why I use the bitters. Put a sort of an orange zest just over the top of it. I've got those oranges in there, right? Actually, for me, I might have just used a touch more apricot in that. But that is... Because, because that gin is not harsh in any way. That is just... Oh, I really, really like that, actually. I would actually say, for me, even though it's not an aperitif drink... I would say that was a definitely a before dinner drink. That kind of really quenched you. That set me up for dinner, that would. And it's not, I promise you, for you 
gin and tonic drinkers, there is nothing in any of these cocktails. You're thinking, that might be the harshest one for you. If, if you don't like a bitter drink, like a Negroni, then that would be definitely one to stay away from. But I promise you, for those of you that love the sort of drinks that I do on my channel, these are properly up your street. It might be, it might sound a bit sort of funny, you know, vermouth with that. And you kind of think, mm, you know, I'm not having that. But I'll tell you what, that's kind of what I want to know as well. If anyone knows of a decent apricot brandy on the market, and I don't mean Bowles, De Kuyper or Briatet, Edmund Briatet, I'm looking for some sort of decent niche brand of apricot brandy. That's kind of what I'm looking for because I do use quite a bit of that in rum cocktails. So, right then, let me know what you think of the old Tom. Who's up for trying it and who's not? Let's have a little quick dive into the questions again. Um, P-E, okay, not ahead there. Right, uh, here we go, thanks Steve. I find Kahlua mixed okay with coffee or cream. I've just, I've got the Abba Falls coffee and chocolate, but not too keen on I think it's the sweetness possibly. Um, Ruben, I would go with Trevor's recommendation and try a little bit of Mr. Black. If you are in the um, UK, Carlossi, sorry, did I say Ruben there a second ago? Carlossi, if you are in the UK, what I would advise you to do is go onto the Master of Malt website and you can order a 30 mil dram of, um, say like Mr. Black. So it's saving you buying the whole bottle and not liking it. There's a lot of 30 mil drams that uh, Master of Malt do. So it's try before you buy essentially. And I definitely recommend you doing that. Uh, <laughs> Jason, don't worry, you can watch on the replay. Uh, Jason, you've just what missed most of these to start off. I did. Let's recap for Jason. Uh, London Dry Gin with tomato juice as a red snapper. That's perfect. And then the Groni. So that was the classic sort of London Dry Gin. Uh, we did the Strawberry Gin. There. That's on camera, yeah. With um, essentially a Collins, um, but with um, lemon uh, lemonade instead of soda water. And we did, that's my gin and tonic. And we did a Strawberry Clover Club. We did that. And then we've just done the old Tom Gin. I've got one more of their gins to do. Don't know what time is. Half past. Won't keep you too much longer. I've got an espresso martini and I've got a Martinez with apricot, uh, an apricot twist in there for the old Tom, which is kind of a, like a mango sort of flip on it. Right. Yeah. McGuinness. I don't know that, Trevor. I don't know. Hello. Her, her, is that her from my favorite gin outside of the UK? Oh, tough, 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 tough. I'm just trying to think now. I that's obviously one. Um, I do actually love Berekstein, it's a very botanical, it's kind of got a little bit of berries in there as well. So it's kind of a Norwegian equivalent to um Brockman's. I had to look Brockman's gins up there. Um, I really do like this one. It's kind of got that subtle sort of fruity notes to it. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I do love as well. Just I'm just thinking around the world there. Um, Australia, um, Four Pillars, the bloody Shiraz. I absolutely love the bloody Shiraz gin from Australia. That's really cool. Essentially what they do is it's uh, their, their dry gin. I think, forget what they call it now. It's not called London Dry. It's their base gin. And what they do is because it's Shiraz and because Australia is a wine country, Every year is essentially a different vintage. So their bloody Shiraz gin will taste uh, different every single year. And I really like that. I've got a couple of bottles. I think I've got the 2016 and I think it's, oh, I'd be down there, 2018 bottles. Um, they're really, really good actually. Big fan of those. So yeah, we're kind of, what else outside the UK? I'm just trying to think of what I've got. Uh, got a lot of it's mainly all english stuff down there i've got monkey 47 which sort of is outside of the uk technically uh yeah i think that's it um giffard <laughs> oh here's a debate for you in canada is it giffard or giffard there right 
Let's get on to this one. This is the fourth one. This is the one I've kind of wanted to get into. And I'm really, get on the screen, there we go. I've got an iPad, this this is kind of cool. It's all being controlled by, by my iPad there, which is really random. Right, this, let's make a bit of room. Let's make a bit of room. So this is Bullard's brand new Coastal Gin. Um, and it's called Coastal because one, two, three, four, five of the botanicals are foraged from the Norfolk coastline. So the base botanicals, we've got juniper, coriander, orange, lemon, and angelica, pretty standard, okay? Pretty standard, you find those in 90% of the gins. However, the foraged ones, we've got, I'm gonna butcher some of these names as well. We've got Sea Purs Lane, we've got Marsh Samphire, we've got Douglas Fir Pines, We've got wild fennel and we've got sea aster. So that's what's in this gin. There's nothing in the bottle. Nothing in the bottle. Now this is kind of why I was a little bit excited. I should have done this at the start really, but I was kind of excited to leave this till the end because this is one thing I kind of do like about Bullards. They are thinking about the environment and they are pushing the boundaries. Ladies and gents, if you love your Bullard's gins, this is the, they haven't paid me to do this at all. I just, you know, I just love it really. If you like Bullard's gins uh, so much that you would buy a second bottle or a third bottle, be one of your standard gins. What they've started to do now is refillable pouches. So that is how your bottle of gin comes. You keep the bottle. And the best bit is, once you've emptied that, is, emptied that, you can put that back in there, put that back through a post box, and it'll go straight back to Bullard's, and they'll recycle it for you. So I really like that. That is a really cool idea, all about saving the planet. It's obviously a little bit cheaper as well to have the pouches than it is to buy the bottles, because there's no glass in there. And I think these pouches are available on Master of Malt as well. So essentially, I haven't done this yet, so we're gonna do this live on air. Live. They, never, they say never work with animals and small children. Never work with booze that you've never done before. So we are just gonna pour it, decant it, live on air. Ready to go. Oh, I thought they'd given me too much then. Oh, they're clever, aren't they? They're clever. It's the right size. Perfect. How cool is that? So that, now, we'll just go back in there and we will send that back to Bullard's up in Norwich for them to recycle. I think that's genius. And that just obviously fits through your letterbox as well. We see that? Look at that. That'll fit through any letterbox. I think that is a really clever thing. And that's for all of their gins. So I haven't actually tried this yet. This is a live on air first ever try of this coastal gin. I'm expecting this to be a bit, um, what's the word? A bit coastal. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Bit coastal, right? Whoa, call us the sea, the samphire. That's what that is. I tell you what, I do love you know, when you get little bits of samphire and you can eat them raw or uncooked or whatever. I do love a bit of samphire. Oh, that smells really nice, actually. A bit of aniseed coming off there as well. Is there aniseed in it? Fennel, that's what that is. Sorry, not aniseed. That is really, t I tell you, it's the fennel that really hits you. I thought it was aniseed, sorry. It's the fennel that really hits you on the nose. I don't know what i compare that to. Again, super smooth, 40%. It's not a huge juniper peppery bite to it. You definitely get those botanicals. I definitely get the, the fennel and the samphire. I 
I'll tell you what, that's going to be a firm favourite with proper gin lovers. Proper, proper gin lovers, that is going to be a definite a firm favourite. Right, uh, two cocktails for this one. We've got that up on screen. I am going to do, uh, and I love the name of this, I'm going to do the Foraged Bramble, and I'm going to do the Coastal uh, Mar... I can't even say it. Margatini. Um, Margatini? Margarita Tini. We like that. So they're the two cocktails I'm going to do for you. Uh, let's get rid of that. Because that might get in your way. I'm looking forward to doing this because I do love a bramble. But this is a different way of making the bramble. So for the glass that I'm going to use for this is that one. So we're going to do the bramble first. Uh, I'm going to make this in a cocktail shaker, actually. It's just... just um, Wash this down. Da, da, da. I'll be right back. Right, just need a glass. Right, for this one, uh, normally you in a bramble, you do the gin, lemon, sugar, and shake it, and then uh, crown it with creme de mure or blackberry liqueur. However, the blackberries, because of the whole forage thing of the gin, I kind of like this. We're going, we're going for fresh blackberries. I kind of like the style there. So it says a handful. I've got big hands. So I'm going for five or six. Five or six blackberries. I'll save one for the garnish. Uh, and I just want a tiny bit of sugar. Do that. What do they say? What do they recommend? 25 ml sugar syrup. Yeah, that might be about right, actually. These blackberries are quite, quite bitter. So 25 ml of sugar syrup. We'll see. That might have been overkill, but we shall see. Right, mud all that down. Or, oh, Trevor, this one's got bits in it. <laughs> Pri private in-joke. Us UK lads. What did he, what did you call me? Lads that like sugar. Right, there we go. Where's my little doodah? Right, so blackberries muddled down. Uh, and then we want our gin and our lemon juice. So 25 ml of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then uh, 50 ml of our gin, our coastal, our coastal gin. Now just gonna ice that down and give it a good old shake. Lovely, lovely, couple more cubes of ice there. I am going to uh, crush ice. I'm going to do this properly. Proper bramble style, actually. Right, give it a good shake. Give it some welly. Tell you what, that's got a long-lasting taste to it. I can still get the samphire. Can't remember. It's the fen fennel on the nose, though. That is massive. Right. Um... Trevor, shall I fine strain or? I like my bits. Right. My bramble with bits in it. And then just top up with a bit more crushed ice. And then garnish with a final blackberry. Right, and that is a forage, what they called it? A forage bramble. Perfect. I thought that was going to be a little bit too sweet then, but because the blackberries are quite tart, that is actually perfect. Oh, that's really good. I tell you, you do get that little bit of fennel. I want to say, I keep saying aniseed, but you do get that little bit of fennel that comes up in the back there. That is a cracking way to make a bramble. Big fan of that. Really like that. Oh, some good cocktails. Some good, good cocktails here. Right, the final cocktail of the night. What was it? We're going to do the coastal margarita. So, think, what well, they call it? Margatini. So, think margarita, but um, it's, it's a, a margatini instead. So, um, absolutely zero. Uh, tequila in there so we're going oops sorry wrong way around going 50 ml of um your gin we are going for look at this bombsite i'm the world's messiest bartender isn't I? 
uh, orange liqueur. Oh, chance for me to rock out my Fortunella. Uh, if you've not seen that before, let's go that way around. That way, Fortunella. Uh, it's my go-to brand spanking new orange liqueur. Think Grand Marnier, but sexier. Uh, so it's a kumquat, kumquat liqueur, lovely. And we want 20, 20 mil, 25 mil, 20 mil. There we go. 25 mil of lime juice. Freshly squeezed lime juice, 25 mil. And then we would go in true sort of uh, margarita styles, like agave or something like that. They've said uh, sugar or honey. So I'm actually going honey syrup. And I'm going 10 mil, is it? Uh, what do they want? 10 mil. 10 mil of fresh honey. There we go. And honey syrup. Honey syrup is just a lot more easier to use than normal honey in cocktails. So just, essentially, you just take some honey, add equal amounts of hot water to it, and then stir it down, and you've got honey syrup. It's just so much easier to use than normal honey in cocktails. Right, ice, ice speedy. So much for the hour long shows, eh? What are we up to now? Aaron, oh, I like to waffle, don't I? I like to have a little ramble. Right, there we go. And then to finish the night off, I'm going for another sexy brand new glass. My little tiki totem poles. From Drink Stuff, can we see that look? Little tiki totem poles. I'm going to double strain. that to one side and then garnish dehydrated why break a bit of a lifetime dehydrated Don't massive there we go right and that is a coast i've got to say it, coastal margatini the nose oh hello I tell you what, you might not be a huge fan of the fennel, the aniseed flavour, but that is what punches through. And the nose with the honey. I think I'm getting a little bit of sap. I think I'm getting the samphire coming through on that, but definitely getting the fennel. That is. That is a guzzler. Like that gin. Like that gin. Right, that is a lot of drinks. And I'm actually going to drink quite a few of these because it's just, it's a non-school night, isn't it? It's bank holiday weekend, isn't it? So where are we with these um, with the comments? Right, oh my god, I've got to scroll back miles here. Uh, right, let's go back. Let's go back on this one. Let's go back on the old tube of you. Right then, what did we get to? Let's get some, right. Trevor, oh, we're going back to the Giffard. Hard G. Right, so I, I'm a big fan of Giffard. I do, I say Giffard. If that's what you're calling the hard G, that is what I'm going with. However, so a lot of people in the UK say Giffard. Yeah, so I, I go Giffard. I go Cornish Chav and Giffard. That's what I'm saying. Uh, oh, just looking at Facebook. Hello. Cheers, Brian. Great stuff. I would definitely go for the Bramble. Yes. Right. Uh, back to the old tube of you. Uh, all Giffard's... Giffard caramel toffee liqueur. Oh, I've not seen that. I'll tell you what I have got. If I can caused not too much damage it's it's a little bit old and a little bit empty but that is possibly one of the sexiest liqueurs i own caribbean pineapple wow that is and i'll tell you what as well if you like vanilla liqueurs the giffards oh, i was going to say in madagascan vanilla it's some posh thing 
vanilla liqueur. That is really, really good. Uh, I've got a lot. I've got a lot of love for Giffard. I, I think I think they might be potentially the best apricot. We'll have to have a little try anyway. Um, anyway, where do we get to? Wrong mouse. That mouse. Um, Ruben. Without the box in the post box. Really? Sorry. Did I get that wrong? Does that just go straight in the post box? Oh my God. I stand corrected. I stand corrected, boys and girls. That just goes in the post box. We'll get our po we'll get our postman drunk because they'll be like getting the getting the fumes. I didn't realise that. So that just goes in the post box. Okay. Clever. We like that. Sorry, Zoe. I stand corrected. That was me. I just assumed the uh, the old box went in the thing, but there we go. Uh, da -da -da. Very cool recycling. Free to send back. Yes, Ruben, free to send back, but I'm assuming Zoe will have answered that. A few comments down. Uh, is that the whole Bullard's collection? Yes, I do believe it is, although watch this space. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bully them, uh, and I'm going to go up and... Hopefully, I'm going to do a video when we're all COVID-free. So we're probably talking 2021 now. Um, we'll we'll do a sort of video from from Bullard's because it's kind of a cool little distillery as well. But we'll do it. I'm, I'm thinking 2021 when we're sort of COVID-free-ish um, because that's cool. They're a fun gang. Um, where do we get to? So Tre oh, Trevor is, Trevor's here. Look, Trevor's on the whole thing. Uh, so brilliant. I'd like to see more companies do this. Yes. Can you ship to Canada? Zoe, get on it. Uh, <laughs> bits in the bramble. Always use flesh blackberries. Steve, are you a Scotch drinker? Drinker. No, I... Yeah, I'm going to say it. I hate Scotch. I, I hate it. I hate, absolutely hate Scotch. Can I say any more passionately? No, I, I don't like scotch. I really don't like scotch. I'm just getting into bourbon uh, and I am, I can handle Irish, but oh, I cannot handle scotch. Malt whiskies, scotch whiskies, blended whiskies. I just do not like scotch. My, my palate doesn't like them. If you stuck a Lefroy, you get a big smoky, uh, Isle peated whiskey in front of me, I would possibly throw up i do not like scotch Ooh. smoky peat oh no right moving on moving swiftly on uh sam glover why did you retract your message that's that's a bit funny uh great show as always thank you trevor probably the same people who like bits <laughs> say soft g oh here we go look bits right i think uh, that is, I, I will, kind of, I'll show that again just for pure comedy value because it's obviously not Sunday. I reckon Sunday the 11th is 2021, so that'll be quite funny. Um, but no, Sunday the 13th, and I'll do that first First thing to me, which will be tomorrow lunchtime. Uh, I'll stick a post up on YouTube, community tab, and you can start uh, submitting your cocktail recipes to that. We'll get it on. I'll do it on all of Facebook and I'll Instagram, DM me, whatever. But we'll get some cocktail recipes going on there. In next week's show, we are definitely, because I've got these cocktails already lined up and all ready to go. We're going to be using Danny Vouvray, Vouvray, Danny Bouvray's chocolate liqueur. And I'm going to be doing uh, some chocolate cocktails for you next week. Um, so really looking forward to that. As always, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, and I will see you through the week. Uh, I've already edited one video. I'm going to I'm going to do some different stuff next week on the old videos. I've got plenty of videos filmed, but I'm going to add some cool different stuff. Uh, so there's a few videos I need to fit in, um, but I've got plenty filmed, plenty ready to go. Uh, they'll start rolling again on Tuesday. But until now, uh, thank you very much. Martin, you are not my friend. <laughs> and we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next week.